Hello, welcome to my How to Use Sketchbook Quick Tip series. This is a series where I will show you quick and easy tips that will help you on your journey learning Sketchbook. If you would like a longer, more comprehensive and in-depth look at these same tips, you can follow the link above, which is a longer video of these very same tips. Otherwise, if you don't have a lot of time, these quick tips are for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy! This quick tip is about using selection tools. I will show you quick and easy techniques for creating gradient maps and clipping masks, among others. Keep watching to learn more. All right, so you have this nice, interesting shape here that is kind of complicated. It's got some light areas, some very translucent areas, and some thicker, darker areas, more opaque. Now, I could just create a new layer. I could, again, use the selection tool. Magic wand plus magic wand again. And then I could go on a new layer. I could use my paintbrush here. We need to invert that first and then it just fills all this in. And that's not really what we want, right? You wanted it to be more just like what you're looking at here. Just like the original. So let's just delete this. Another thing you can do, let's say you wanted this, you want to keep the integrity, but you're like, I want it red. I don't want it this color. Okay, well, you don't need to do anything else. You don't need the selection tool. You click on the layer. There's this little lock button. If you lock it, that is an alpha lock. So now you can take your paintbrush and you stay on that layer and now you are just, you can recolor it and you can mix colors. You know, if you're just careful where you're going, you can do different things, you know, get real detailed about it. I could technically do that with my drawing. Instead of the alpha lock, you could go to color balance. So now we can go back to this and change the hue, and now you're changing all of it. So I remember when scrapbooking was a thing, I still did that. I don't know, is it still a thing? Does anybody do scrapbooking? I suppose using Instagram and using, you know, frames and Canva and, you know, playing around with, with those, that's kind of scrapbooking, right? Um, let's say you wanted like a vignette around your photograph, right? And you could do that in here too. Let's, you, you could do a couple things. So I'll delete this and I'm going to add a new layer and let's just figure out how we want our vignette to look. All right, let's say, let's say I wanted it kind of an oval shape. Okay, let's use the circle, the ellipse. I'm going to spin it around like that. Then I'm going to, I'll just take pencil, make sure it's black, dark, draw around it. It is drawing only on the circle. That's what's nice about these little guides. It reminds me, especially the one here in the middle, the curve ruler. I haven't really played with this much. You can play around with it to like, if you want a perfect line, let's say you're doing lettering or something and this, uh, predictive stroke thing just isn't quite enough. Or let's say you're doing a car. Uh, if, if you've been to uh, art school, you may have heard of French curves. They're these plastic 
curvy things that have all these different types of curves on them and you have to I was never very good with them and you have to just sort of line them up and then use them to you know draw against and then it helps you create a nice line but I don't really use that. I use the ruler occasionally and this circle so there's my there's my circle turn that off you can see it here it's on this separate layer uh, I'm going to use the magic wand selection tool again we are going to select is it doing it let's turn this off so it's not adding there so it's selecting everything outside that circle which is exactly what I want so now I don't want that line drawing of the circle I'm going to add one more layer and then I'm going to hit uh, I'm going to hit fill yeah let's just fill fill with black there now we have a vignette okay and it's over the top of that but one thing that I wish now this is something they could totally do um, but they don't is feathering so what I have to do is either take the textured eraser that has a real nice kind of soft area or the blending brush that I like to use yeah you know that's that's kind of like feathering that's the thing about sketchbook it's sort of like a digital version of real paint I mean you don't have feathering in real paint you'd have to do something like this anyway so yeah you can you know kind of hand do it you do it by hand and you get the softer edge you can play with it and uh, I need to erase more you know whatever here's the eraser so those are different choices you could also do shapes let's say uh, I've seen them you know in scrapbooking you would do like make your painting look like it was brushed on so you know so so that it has uneven teared edges or whatever so so what you could do is instead of this you could do kind of just a fun shape all right I just did a sloppy version of one of those things that would probably you know include her face normally so I could do that and then again wand the magic wand selection tool again so see now we have this shape right so now we hit we go to that layer we open up the layer options hit clear and now it's just that area you, you painted in. And again, it does not have the nice feathered edges, but this kind of has a neat teared paper effect because it's using the alpha information from this brush. So, you know, and you can see this is, hey, let's turn this off there, see? So, you know, you can use masks. It does work like masks, so it's not, just because it's not called a mask doesn't mean you can't do it. So this gave me a nice, neat kind of textured paper there, torn paper look. So yeah, there's there's lots of interesting ways to use a uh, use these selection tools in different ways here. So another thing you can do is use them to move things around. So let's take the lasso and let's say I'm just going to this is in the purple so I'm just going to go around a shape I can cut it add a new layer and paste it and then you get the transform tool so if I want to I can move it that's one way to do it let's say you didn't like where the placement of something and you can totally do that I mean I could go around her face and move her head or something I mean I could I could do the whole thing you could have this selected here okay it's still selected and it's in the right back in the right spot um, you could just go straight to the transform tools and move it like that you could also change where it's sitting so like if you're working with you want some symmetry like I was doing some angel wings the other day I made just one of them and then I duplicated it and just hit that and popped it over and it was a nice even you know moves it like exactly even you can flip it around and you can warp it and change the size
You can even, let's go back, undo. See, that was just a one-time undo because it doesn't save what you did until you hit done. I could clear it. So that works really nice for erasing like out large sections. Uh, the only thing that I really wish it could do, because I've run into, let's say you have fabric and part of it is wet, so you need whatever's underneath, like if it's on skin, you need it to kind of show through, right? Because like if it's a light color, it's going to be slightly more transparent than the rest of it because it's wet. So I wish it could change the opacity of that selection. I swear when I first got this about two years ago, it did that. And then one day I was trying to do it again and it didn't work. And so what they did is they sent me, you know, I asked them, I'm like, I think this is broken. Can, is there something, you know, I'm doing wrong here? What happened to this? It used to do this. It's not doing it anymore. So they sent me a little video showing me how to do it. And obviously I could have figured this out myself, but it wasn't, it's not broken. It's just doesn't do it anymore. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it never did it, but this is another way to adjust, um, the opacity of just a small section. So again, we have it selected. We go here and we hit cut, create a new layer, hit paste. Now it's on that layer, hit done, because we don't want it to move, right? The opacity has changed. It went to solid because this layer is all the way up to 100. Now we can just adjust that section. You do get this harsh line. So what I've had to do in the past then, after changing the opacity, I then merge, not merge all, never do that until you're completely finished. Uh, I merge it with the one so they're kind of connected again, but then I have to kind of blend, that's too big, blend this line a little bit just, just to make them blend together. And if it's a subtle change, this blends much nicer. You know, like if you're making something slightly more translucent because it looks wet like a piece of fabric and it's showing light through it more. Because again, they don't have feather, which is, it would be much nicer if the selection tools had feather options and then this would blend together much nicer when you had to cut and paste it back in. So that's a workaround not necessarily a feature. It's just a workaround. Okay, let's go back to this one and I'm going to show you how to do gradient maps with the selection tools. So let's let's get this we're going to turn that one off. We're down here on this layer and now this time because it's a nice solid color, I'm going to use the uh, magic wand again and select that, the inside. So now it's a nice clean selection. I'm going to make a new layer I'll turn this one off. And now under our paint bucket, we have these gradients. We got linear and we got radial fill. Uh, I'll show you the linear fill. So what you do is, if you know how a gradient works, you need to tell it the direction the gradient is going. So I'm gonna start at the top outside the selected area and drag down. See now it's got the lightest, it's a circle up here, the lightest one on top, a mid-range color at the bottom, and the darkest one here. Now you can add some, so let's add one there. I'm going to add one here and adjust where it is. I'm going to click on that and you can see when you click on them it shows you the color in your little puck here. As you can see it just does automatically white to dark in the grays. But we can pick any of these in the puck here and change the color. See? Really cool. You can also, let's say you wanted the very top to be white. Bring it down a little. Bring this up. But you say this is not 
a gradient map, Melissa. This is just a gradient. Well, we can make it a gradient map, can't we? Okay, well, let's see how we do that. Let's say this is exactly what we want. It's the right angle. Everything is what we want. So we're done with it. Let's turn off the paint bucket. Turn off the selection tools. Got this really cool shape. And we turn this back on. Oh, look at that. There you go. It's a gradient map, right? And you, you can be as detailed as you want. I mean, if you just wanted to do the horse, we'll just select out the horse shape and apply your gradient or your color. And there you go. Just like we were doing before with these background colors with the flats, right? But you say that's not quite a gradient map. I mean, the dark of the, the pencil is still black, right? It, it is. You're right. You're exactly right. But blend modes give you a gradient map. So overlay. Now it that the darks and the lights are using the color underneath. So the brightest, you know, even even though like in this area on the horse and the shadow, because that area is this light blue, it's going to be the darkest version of that blue. Of course, if you use a dark color, as you can see here, the in the darkest darks, it's nearly black. But you can see where it lightens a little bit. There's some purple here. Another thing you could do is turn this down just so it's just barely doing something. That was a how to use Autodesk sketchbook quick tip. Be sure to like and subscribe for more as I will have more to come. Thanks for watching and stay creative.